Greetings, Fright fans. Dr. Gang Green, physician of Fright here, and you're just in time because I've got something special for you viewers tonight. Tonight, I've got a short film called The Beast in the Cave. Now, this is based on a short story by H.P. Lovecraft that was written in 1904 when he was just 14 years old. It also happens to be an entry in this year's Rondo Awards, which were just announced. The awards are for 2016. This short film was adapted by yours truly, directed by Cameron McCaslin, who happened to win Best Short Film last year in the Rondo Awards for his movie, Taylor Poe. So we'll go ahead and get to it, and I'll see you guys after the movie. This is The Beast in the Cave. It is only with the greatest of fortune that I am here today and able to relay the following story. As unbelievable as it might seem, I assure you every word is true. I had enrolled on a tour of the mammoth cave system that lies on the southernmost fringes of the city. During the course of our tour through the recesses of the cave, I became separated from the party. I gradually realized that I was hopelessly lost. Turn as I might, I could find no familiar landmarks. I realized I had wandered well beyond the path of an ordinary search party and began to fear I might never again see the pleasant light of day. Yet I did not panic. I reflected that if I should die, this majestic cavern would be as welcome a sepulcher as any churchyard might afford. I had no one to blame but myself, however, as I had separated from the regular party of sightseers wandering for over an hour into forbidden areas of the cave. My lantern slowly began to fade. Soon, I would be enveloped in total blackness. No, no. Ah. As the last fitful rays of my lantern faded into obscurity, I resolved to leave no stone unturned, no possible means of escape neglected. I fancied I heard the sound of soft steps approaching on the rocky floor. Was my deliverance to be accomplished so soon? I was at the point of renewing my cries when my delight turned to horror, as I realized the footsteps were not like those of any mortal man. In place of the tread of the heavy-booted guide was a series of soft, stealthy steps, like the padded paws of some feline. I was now convinced my cries had attracted some wild beast, perhaps a mountain lion which had accidentally strayed into the cave. Seeking to arm myself, I grasped a fragment of rock in each hand and waited with resignation for the inevitable result. Nearer, nearer the Somebody dreaded help! footfalls approached. I was petrified, no. rooted to the spot. I could hear the labored breathing of the beast Guided by my sense of hearing, I hurled the jagged limestone fragment. I heard the thing jump, landing safely a distance away. Readjusting my aim, I hurled the second missile with renewed strength. I listened as the rock struck home and the creature collapsed, prone and unmoving. Its breathing continued in heavy, gasping inhalations. I realized I had merely wounded it. Fearing it might recover an attack, I ran best as I could in the darkness in the opposite direction from the sound. I suddenly heard a metallic clicking from up ahead, followed by the reflected light of an approaching lantern. With joy, I realized it was the guide. Over here, I'm over here! Are you okay? Uh, I'm all right. When I got to the exit, I realized I was a man short. You were fortunate I was able to find you. You don't know the half of it. I, I was almost killed back there. Something something was stalking me. A, a, a beast of some sort. It was circling, about to move in for the kill when I threw a rock, injuring it. Wildlife? 
this far down in the cavern? Certainly not. I kid you not, it lies wounded just a little ways back. Indeed. Come see for yourself. Come on. We retraced my steps and soon discovered a white object on the cave floor, whiter even than the gleaming limestone. And that is when we realized with horror that the creature I had killed, the strange beast of the unfathomed cave, was, or had at one time, been a man. Now, how cool is it that you can write something when you're 14 years old and over 100 years later, 112 to be exact, somebody makes a short film based on your story? I mean, that's pretty commendable. And talk about some serious staying power. You got to give it up to H.P. Lovecraft. He was truly a one of a kind and a master of the macabre. Now, as I said before, we are honored to announce that this is a nominee in the best short film category in the Rondo Awards. So please, everybody go over to rondoaward.com and cast a vote for us in the best short film category. We'd really appreciate that. And while you're there, be sure and vote for my Fantastic Films of Vincent Price series in the best multimedia category. I'm also up for best horror host and a number of other categories. So feel free to vote in as many of those as you like. That's rondoaward.com. Hope you all enjoyed this. Leave me a comment down below, please, and let me know what you thought. If enough of you like it, I'll do more, host more short films here in the future. And until next time, this is Dr. Gangreen from the lab saying, stay mad. <laughs>